right now ready to reopen. Long Island and Westchester, just some of the areas that could be back in business this week. What Governor Cuomo says needs to be done first. Plus, sink or swim, the new plan to fully reopen New York City beaches in time for summer. But there's one person who needs to get on board, and that's Mayor de Blasio. Plus, all right, not the best weather for a beach day today, but sunshine is returning. Storm Team 4 has the timing with your holiday weekend forecast. Hi, everybody. This is Today in New York. I'm Gus Rosendale. And I'm Pat Battle, Gus in the studio, and I'm in my little personal studio here in Bergen <laughs> County. And peeking out my window, I got to talk to Maria because yes. that cloud, that big cloud, it got bigger. No precipitation, but where's my sunshine, Maria? I know we're we're waiting on the the more breaks than the overcast that we're sort of locked in in some places while other spots are full on blue skies right now. So let's show you what's going on. It is drying out today, so the rain has moved on. That's the good thing. We do have some of that afternoon sunshine. I think will be around for us, but it is going to stay cool at the coast too, where the clouds are going to linger and we have that northeast wind really kicking in. 53 right now at Central Park. We're up to 57 in Poughkeepsie, where we have a little bit more sunshine. 55 in Hempstead, and we're in the low 50s down the shore. So plan on partly to mostly cloudy skies today, not full on sunshine, staying dry, a little breezy for the midday too. 67 degrees at 4 o'clock. We'll see 63 by 8 p.m. Looking ahead, though, we do have a chance for some showers, but by the end of the week, I'll kind of time out what we're looking at for the rest of the holiday weekend, including a few more clouds overnight tonight. That's all ahead. Guys, back to you. All right, Maria, thank you. And we turn now to the latest on the coronavirus pandemic and our road to recovery on this Memorial Day weekend. Two more New York regions could reopen next week, Westchester and the northern suburbs, as well as Long Island. Now, both New York and New Jersey are permitting more people to gather on Memorial Day weekend, and both states have reported fewer than 100 deaths for the first time in a very long time. Still, those numbers are so grim and heartbreaking because 84 people lost their lives in New York and 96 lives have been lost in New Jersey to COVID-19. Here in the city, there is a new push today to ease some restrictions and open the beaches for swimming. Last night, the city council released a list of recommendations it wants the mayor to implement to safely reopen this summer. Today, New York's Ken Bufa has been at Rockaway Beach all morning long. Ken, I know you've been talking to people. Uh, what do New Yorkers think about this proposal? Well, right now, this is like a live demonstration to show you the rules that are in place. You can see the surfers behind me. They are in the sea. They're enjoying the waves. But over here, you can see the beachgoers. Well, they are stuck in the sand. And that's why the city council just released some guidelines of what they want to see changed with these beaches now open. Now, they say they recommend that the beachgoers should be allowed to go for a swim because right now only surfers can. They also say they want some parts of the sand to be sectioned off so beachgoers can sunbathe and move around more safely while still practicing social distancing. And lastly, the council wants lifeguards to be given PPE and restaurants adjacent to the beaches to be open as well. Now, like I said, Mayor de Blasio has it that surfers are allowed to go into the sea, but New Yorkers cannot. In fact, if they want to go in the water, they can only go up to their ankles. And I spoke to New Yorkers and they say they're not sure how to feel, but they somewhat understand the procedures that are now in place. I think we need to keep people safe. If you can come out, take a little walk, uh, use uh, social distancing, I think it's fine. I mean, we all need to get out, but we need to make sure that we're all safe. Now, de Blasio's team is looking at recommendations from the city council. The city council members are worried that when the weather gets nicer, New Yorkers are not going to listen to restrictions. And if they want to go in the water, they will. In fact, on Friday, there was a drowning here. But as it sits right now, if you're going to the beach, you are not allowed in the water past your ankle. But if you're a surfer, you can go as far as you'd like. Guys, Lace from here in Rockaway, Ken Bufa today in New York. So, Ken, that's the deal in New York. Uh, most All beaches right, uh, most beaches and boardwalks are uh, back open in New Jersey as well. Uh, social distancing, capacity restrictions, they are being enforced there. Towns are enforcing their own restrictions too, some keeping bathrooms closed, others not allowing anyone to swim. Drone video shows some decent crowds. That's in Sea Isle City. This was Saturday morning, but a business owner in Point Pleasant tells us it has been a slow start. Right now, if this was a normal Memorial Day weekend with rain in the morning and then you know, it's, it's kind of clearing up right now. I would have a store full of people right now, and there's just, there's nobody around. 
So, I mean, there's nobody even down at the shore. Non-essential businesses around the state have already started curbside pickup service, and some shore hotels will reopen, we're told, after Memorial Day. Also in New Jersey, Hoboken expanding its open streets program this morning. We have a live look for you there. This is Park Avenue between 5th and 11th Street. Some bicyclists out there, some joggers too. One of two new stretches about to open up to pedestrians and cyclists at 8 a.m. That happens, so they've been going there for about an hour and a half now. Uh, the other is going to be 10th Street between Garden and Grand. All part of a plan to create more space for social distancing, of course, and avoid overcrowding in other public spaces. The city introduced other blocks of open streets just over the past two weekends. Westchester County, coming back from the brink. It was, of course, one of the first coronavirus hotspots in the country, and it is now on the verge of reopening. Governor Cuomo says the Mid-Hudson region could start to reopen as soon as Tuesday after the holiday. And that includes Westchester County, specifically New Rochelle, where a containment zone, you'll recall, was set up in early March for one of the nation's earliest outbreaks. Seven weeks ago, it was pretty rough. We had, we had a lot of fatalities overnight. <clears throat> we had 1,200 people in the hospital. Uh, th those were serious numbers, 12,000 active cases. Uh, but now it looks like we've got a handle on them as much as anybody can feel that way. The governor says the key to reopening will be to hire and train enough contact tracers for all seven counties in the Mid-Hudson region. And Pat Governor Cuomo says Long Island could begin reopen, or reopening some parts of its economy as soon as Wednesday. Now, there are two conditions here. Governor Cuomo wants the number of COVID-19 deaths to keep dropping, of course. And he says Long Island needs to ramp up training for that contact tracing program. Both Nassau and Suffolk counties are on track for the first phase of reopening of certain businesses. And that includes construction, manufacturing, and retail. But, however, shopping won't be the same. Can't go in. You can't walk around. Uh, you call ahead and you say what you would like and obviously uh, many times the transaction will be through credit card just over the phone and then you go and pick it up. We will, I believe, hit uh, Wednesday uh, phase one uh, and we will begin the uh, reopening, uh, which is very good news. And a reminder this Memorial Day weekend, some beaches in Nassau and Suffolk counties are restricted just for local residents. Officials are also limiting capacity to create more space once again for social distancing. Well, we're going to turn now to a New Jersey hospital taking new safety measures to protect all patients and staff. You know, with more people starting to come in again for non-COVID-19 related treatment, there is a push to make sure they're comfortable doing so. News Force Brian Thompson has a closer look. In a second or less, this multi-thousand dollar device will scan your eyes to take your temperature, which is what it does every day now for everyone entering Hackensack University Hospital, a search for any sign of COVID-19. We're testing all patients, whether they're in the emergency room or they're coming in for a procedure or for a, a surgery. Staff gets scanned as well. These thermal scanners to be deployed across all 17 hospitals and 14 nursing homes in the Hackensack Meridian system here in New Jersey over the next two weeks. Also part of the regimen, a thorough disinfectant fogging of all patient rooms, COVID or otherwise. Cleaning staff instructed to find every nook and cranny for treatment while wearing protective gear. Ultraviolet light is also being used to disinfect large spaces such as operating rooms. Just a 90 second burst has been shown to cleanse all parts of a room, every corner and recess. So we're using all the technology that, that's available, and as I said, we're also certifying the cleaning and the disinfecting procedures with an outside uh, consulting firm. Hackensack University Medical Center is a flagship of the system, but all of its members now have wards segregated by COVID and non-COVID. And it's not shy about using old-fashioned elbow grease as a backup. Sanitized wipes here seeking out any germs on the floor. All of this coming as a number of cases has dropped from a high of 2,700 to under 700 this week across the system. It's been a slow but steady uh, decrease ever since the middle of April. Hackensack Meridian has hired hundreds of people as part of this effort, but with fears of a second wave come the fall, it really sees no alternative. In Hackensack, Brian Thompson, News for New York. Well, new this morning, we had to tell you about a really heartless crime in the Bronx. Police looking for a suspect who robbed a woman 
in a wheelchair. It happened back on the 5th of May. I know officers say the victim was taking out cash from an ATM inside a deli in Morrisania when a woman comes up to her and asks her for money. Well, the 65-year-old woman in the wheelchair refused, and that's when police say the suspect just snatched $200 out of her hands and ran off. Thankfully, the woman was not hurt. And today marks one year since the disappearance of Connecticut mother Jennifer Dulos. The 50-year-old vanished after she dropped her children off at school a year ago. Her estranged husband, Fotis Dulos, was charged with her murder after police found evidence that Jennifer had been attacked, but her body was never found. The couple's five children now live with Jennifer's mother on the Upper East Side in Manhattan. And Fotis Dulos, he took his own life back in January. Still to come here on Today New York on this Sunday, we have an update on that big gym battle that's going on in South Jersey. Plus, summer in a bottle. We're going to head to the Hamptons on this Memorial Day weekend to see how two siblings are turning local wine into a booming business during the pandemic. And summer weather is still on hold, at least a little bit. The clouds not helping. There they are on the visible satellite picture. Coming up, I'll time out the sun, and I do have some 80s in that 10-day forecast. That's all ahead. News 4, your source for local coverage of the coronavirus pandemic. Transit workers are sounding the alarm. A team of reporters that goes the extra mile to bring you vital information. Together, we're for New York. On the road to recovery, you've got questions, we've got answers. How do I get a haircut? Go out to eat. Can I go to the shore and be safe? What about the subway? Road to recovery stories answer your reopening questions. Only on News 4 New York at 5. This is our home. We've never seen it look quite like this. But there's no mistaking it. And it's our job to protect it. Because the best people to fight for our communities are those within them. So if you've just bought a Volkswagen or we're thinking of buying sometime soon, we're here to help with the community-driven promise. I'm Alfonso, and there's more to me than HIV. There's my career, my cause, my choir. I'm a work in progress. So much goes into who I am. HIV medicine is one part of it. Prescription Devado is for adults who are starting HIV-1 treatment and who aren't resistant to either of the medicines, dolutegravir or lamivudine. Devado has two medicines in one pill to help you reach and then stay undetectable. So your HIV can be controlled with fewer medicines while taking Devado. You can take Devato any time of day, with food or without. Don't take Devato if you're allergic to any of its ingredients or if you take the Fetalide. If you have hepatitis B, it can change during treatment with Devato and become harder to treat. Your hepatitis B may get worse or become life-threatening if you stop taking Devato. So do not stop Devato without talking to your doctor. Serious side effects can occur, including allergic reactions, liver problems, and liver failure. Life-threatening side effects include lactic acid buildup and severe liver problems. If you have a rash and other symptoms of an allergic reaction, stop taking Devato and get medical help right away. Tell your doctor if you have kidney or liver problems, including hepatitis B or C. One of the ingredients in Devato may harm your unborn baby. Your doctor may prescribe a different medicine than Devato. Your doctor should do a pregnancy test before starting Devato. Use effective birth control while taking Devato. The most common side effects are headache, diarrhea, nausea, trouble sleeping, and tiredness. So much goes into who I am and hope to be. Ask your doctor if starting HIV treatment with Devato is right for you. Judge has apparently ordered a gym in South Jersey to close after it opened repeatedly against state orders. The owner of Attila's Gym in Belmar posted this video Friday with the news about this court order. The gym received summonses each time it opened this past week, and the state health department intervened Thursday. Attila's opened up again on Friday, though, and now they say they'll be closed until court on Tuesday. Attorneys representing the gym's owners and members say they plan to file a federal case seeking an injunction to the governor's order. Well, Gus, you and I have talked about this. You, you may have heard this recent study that alcohol sales are absolutely soaring during the pandemic, or maybe you've got evidence of it yourself. But what about those in-person wine stores? You know, the little wine stores you go to where you select your own wine in person and taste it, that kind of thing. Those little wineries, the local ones. Well, there's one local vineyard on Long Island that found a creative way to turn sour grapes into sweet success. Here's our Natalie Pascarella. 
When Joey Wolfer and her brother took over their father's vineyard near the Hamptons seven years ago, they made it a destination with live music, tours, and tastings. And they made their summer in a bottle rosé one of the coolest wines around. My dad and Roman started the first rosé in 95 when people thought that was a joke. So they were really innovative from the start, and we kind of kept that going. But keeping the Wolfer Estate Vineyard booming in a pandemic required a new blend for the business. I think like everybody, we sort of said, okay, how is this going to go? For those of us New Yorkers who live 9-11, and of course this is very different, you do go kind of like, okay, what's the worst case scenario? Like, we have to shut. And my immediate thing was more like, less about the business, but more about like, how are we going to keep people happy and, and entertained? Forced to close the vineyard to the public, they plotted ways to continue being a part of their customers' lives. How can we have people connecting with us, but also with each other, in a way that's authentic and still like, able to learn. I think we all were like, give me a drink. What are we living through? It's funny because the virtual tastings were an immediate thing that came to mind. The fourth line in this virtual tasting is our Fatalis Fatum. Indeed, they cooked up virtual tastings. Sign up online, order three wines, and book a 45-minute tutorial with a wine guide. Just having the experience with the winemaker themselves is like something that you don't get. They're really supposed to be 45 minutes, but there's everybody's having such a good time. They go into an hour. Roman, the vineyard's winemaker, even says he's getting more out of these tastings than when they were in-person experiences. He said, you know, it's so interesting. He's like, I get in front of these crowds and I speak about the wine, but I'm never connecting with the people because there's so many people or because they're thinking about something else. But in these times, we really have people's attention. The virtual tastings have been an attention grabber for another reason. They're now expanding the vineyard's reach around the country. A lot of people can't come here, you know. This is a very small part of the world and it's expensive to get here. And I think a lot of people have been really intrigued by our brand now have the opportunity to try it that way. And that was our Natalie Pascarella reporting. What a great idea. I yeah. may have to tune in for one of those. So, you know, getting kind of boring just drinking the same old Chardonnay all the time, Gus. Uh, you got that <laughs> right. I think everyone's thirsty after seeing that. Uh, Maria's in for Raph today. Raph's spending some time with family. Hey, Maria, just want to run this by you. I've been mm -hmm. keeping some notes about how Pat's been yep. describing the weather. So I want to see if this is meteorologically oh, correct. Oh, yeah. Uh, for the Saturday forecast, gotcha. Ms. Battle said, blech. And for today, she gave two <laughs> snaps up. Was that three, one, two, three? So is that about, is that about where we stand here? In yeah. a Z formation. Yeah, in Z, yeah, yeah, I, yes, yeah, yeah. I wholeheartedly support all of it. That's fantastic. Okay. And what's keeping us from three snaps up are the lingering clouds that Pat also very nicely noticed that are still kind of out there. That's keeping this from really being a 10, where we're just a 10 compared to yesterday, right? So looking at some sun today, and we're also looking ahead to, to tomorrow, of course, and it's still looking dry and below average. So I'll take a look at that. And then we definitely have the summer vibe in the extended forecast. And it's not just the warmth, but it'll return to the, some of that humidity too. So I have a little bit of everything in there. Let's start with the right now. And there are the clouds that are pretty stubborn. This is the visible satellite picture. So you're looking at the sun's light shining on the clouds like a picture. And you can see the movement too. It's really hugging uh, the, the Long Island and down the shore. There are plenty of clear spots too. And that's where we're getting the full sunshine and where we're seeing the bright blue sky. So let me do a little camera tour for you as a proof, right? We head up to Claryville in Sullivan County. There's that gorgeous blue sky, that full sunshine on that nice green grass and the uh, the trees. The clouds have been a little bit more stubborn, though, in uh, places like Manhasset. Uh, that was a quick view of New Haven, Connecticut, where also the sun has broken out. But there's Nassau County, the cloud cover. And of course, it's been pretty gray down the shore. And look at that rough surf. So high risk of rip currents from Long Island and down the shore, far from an ideal beach day. The clouds will linger there most of the day. Temperatures staying in the 50s from Seabright to uh, Seaside Heights, Point Pleasant. For Long Island beaches, from Jones Beach to Fire Island, you may break out in some of that overcast. But here, too, temperatures held to about 60 degrees because of that northeast wind. 53 right now at Central Park. We're down to 53 in White Plains, 56 in Hempstead. But looking at the highs today, you can see the influence of that northeast wind, right, from Long Island down the shore, 50s and 60s. But where we're going to see a little bit warmer, 
67 in New York. We're talking 70s for parts of the Hudson Valley, like uh, Newburgh, 74, 74 New Paltz, Poughkeepsie, 75 degrees. So that little bit of extra sunshine, a little bit removed from that east wind off the water, it's going to make a big difference. All right, let's take a peek into tomorrow because we're still not going to be able to just clear out completely and get that full on sunshine. But I do think most of us stay dry tomorrow. And I say most because there's a slight chance of a shower through the Poconos and temperatures that will once again struggle to get close to average. I think we'll hit 70 in the city, but you can see that it is going to be off and on with the sun and the clouds. And once again, especially along the coast. So looking ahead beyond the holiday, the warm up continues 78 degrees on Tuesday, 80 on a Wednesday. But you can see some sun trying to get through. We have a cold front approaching Thursday into Friday. That's going to bring back the chance for some showers and maybe a few thunderstorms on Friday. I do think it'll clear us out in time for the weekend. And believe it or not, although it's going to be cooler, right, low to mid 70s, that is actually a return to average. And of course, at this point, Monday, it is June 1st. I can't believe it. 74 degrees with some sun for the high. Notice those overnight low temperatures too, pretty mild into the 50s and the 60s. So overall, the holiday weekend kind of taking a turn from yesterday in a good way. We'll stay dry at least through the end of next week. Right. Stefan, yeah, I, I can't believe it's June already either. All right, thanks, Maria. Well, in sports, NBA players could be back on the court soon near Disney World. John Chandler explains. Good morning. The NBA's latest return to play scenario would be a Mickey Mouse operation. In this case, that is a compliment. The association starting what a league spokesperson called on Saturday exploratory conversations with the Walt Disney Company about restarting the season in Orlando. Pencil in late July on the calendar. That's what they're targeting. Players Association involved in these talks too. The games would play out at Disney's wide world of sports complex. They have space and they have housing there for everyone. It's essentially a safe bubble for basketball if it gets going. Safety amid COVID-19 is tricky, though. It's a pay scale for players, which has to be considered. Money, the major hang up right now for Major League Baseball, as well as safety. At the rate, we may see playoff hockey before anything else because the NHL Players Association Executive Board on Friday approved the 2014 conference based restart format. Formal announcement on this could come early next week. There is still work that needs to be done, though, before pucks are dropped this summer. The league has to sign off of it, figure out how to return players uh, to team facilities safely, and then it may be even more of a hurdle. They have to find sites to play and ways to rest regularly test players for coronavirus. Pro soccer may be providing the roadmap to restarting in empty arenas with no fans. La Liga is the next to return. Starting June 8th, teams are free to resume play, says Spain's Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez. The season was suspended on March 12th with the country in a state of emergency with over 230,000 confirmed COVID cases back then. Players have slowly returned to training in stages over the last few weeks, and many players still want more time to train rather than rush, rush back and risk injury. Minor League Baseball should be starting up for the summer, but instead teams are struggling with no games, no fans and no revenue. And the Pensacola Blue Wahoos are getting creative trying to make money. They have placed their stadium on Airbnb. Seriously, 1500 bucks a night gets you full access to the clubhouse, a bedroom with 10 beds, and you and nine of your best friends can also take cuts in the batting cage all night. And if you need safe space outdoor to run around in, hey, you have the entire field to play with. The Wahoos are the Twins double A affiliate. Gotta say, that is not a bad idea. Later today, we've got a golf match featuring Tiger Woods, Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, and Phil Mickelson. Might be one of the most high profile foursomes in golf history. I'm sure it's gonna be entertaining. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. For Today in New York, I'm John Chandler. All right, that should be fun. Uh, still ahead on this Sunday morning, dogs that deliver beer. Oh, good boy. Your eyes don't deceive you. Details on this pet project by One Long Island Business that's bringing smiles to all their customers. Feel like getting back out there? Nissan is ready to help you. Kick off summer with a low $149 per month lease on the 2020 Nissan Sentra. The High Note is coming to your home. It's time I record a new album. I mean, that's one plan. I don't really care. We just got to play it safe.
I will decide what I do next. The High Note, made PG-13, this Friday. My brother David has special needs, and he is very special to me. Seeing him overcome so many challenges has inspired me to empower others. As a consumer protection regulator and federal prosecutor, I fought for everyone's right to pursue their American dream. In Congress, I'll do the same for you. I'll continue my fight against bullies, gun violence, and environmental destruction, and ensure that everyone has quality, affordable health care. It's time we come together to get things done. I'm Adam Schleifer, and I approve this message. The open road, the wind in your hair, the feeling of freedom that drives us to go out and discover. At Chevy, we're committed to getting you there with confidence and peace of mind. If you need a new vehicle, we have leases available on select 2020 models where current qualified lessees can practically sign and drive. You may even shop online and take delivery at home where available. And when you do, your Chevy Clean dealers commit to using enhanced vehicle cleaning measures with CDC-approved cleansers so you can find new roads with confidence. Zero or $20. That's how low your monthly premium will be if you qualify for the essential plan through New York State of Health from Fidelis Care. Now offering dental and vision coverage. Call 1-888-FIDELIS-TTY-711 or visit FidelisCare.org. Feel like getting back out there? Nissan is ready to help you. Kick off summer with a low $149 per month lease on the 2020 Nissan Sentra. There's good news out there. News for New York is highlighting stories of everyday heroes. Share yours at hashtag grateful for you. Deliveries are up during the pandemic. That might not shock you, but what may surprise you in this next story is who's making the deliveries back. News Force Ida Siegel introduces us to a pair of dogs on Long Island who are spreading cheer while delivering beer. <laughs> a special delivery on Long Island. This is the funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> They're so sweet. Do they do this just like all day long? They go get This people. is what they do. This is their job. <laughs> Dad, look, they've got beer on. <laughs> Yes, those adorable golden retrievers are delivery dogs. They have beer cans wrapped around them. Don't worry, they're empty. And they've been bringing craft beer and huge smiles to people's homes the last two months. Hi, fellas. This is Buddy and Barley. And Buddy and Barley. Oh, goodness, go Buddy and Barley are the resident dogs of the Six Harbors Brewing Company in Huntington. Like everyone else, COVID forced a change in the business model to delivery and pickup only. The owners, however, decided to get creative. People were saying, gee, I miss your dogs. So we started bringing the dogs on some of the deliveries and we said, hey, why don't we, why don't we make this a, a permanent thing? Why don't we get the dogs out there in the car with us? Okay, Barley, you ready? Get ready for our delivery? Good boys. <laughs> it was a hit. I was very excited. First first time uh, I've ever had beer delivered by a couple of dogs. Yeah. So uh, it makes the beer extra special. Barley and Buddy make every delivery a joyful event. It is quite a birthday surprise. I'm just so, like, surprised. Oh, I'm glad you're happy. Thank you. We've gotten a lot of phone calls for uh, surprise gifts. People having us send our dogs to their friend's house or their son's 21st birthday was this past week. Uh, anniversary gifts. And the dogs have a ball riding in the delivery truck. Then they bring the empty cans to the front door, give everyone a good laugh, and then the real beer follows. Believe me, it wasn't hard to train them because they want to be with people. They miss people just as much as people miss them. Hey, buddy! They have become like therapy dogs, delivering the kind of mid-pandemic cheer you can't put a price on. What we're dealing with right now, it's five minutes of happiness, which I think a lot of people need. <laughs> In Huntington, Ida Siegel, News 4, New York. What's it? Get mommy a mimosa. <laughs> Go get mommy a mimosa. Not working, Gus. It's not well, working. You're, you're, Back to you know, school for this one. <laughs> we couldn't get our dogs to sit growing up, let alone bring along a flask. So I think Blitzen's doing pretty good there. <laughs> get him to work on that mimosa. I like that. Still ahead here on Today in New York, we'll have a check of your top stories, including this.
to swim or not to swim at CD beaches. City Council has one answer. Mayor de Blasio has another. I'll explain when Today in New York comes right back.